in the next few minutes, I'm going to transport you from the macroscopic world you see around you to the microscopic world inside all of us, inside all of life. I'm going to introduce you to new frontiers of DNA research and share with you the pure joys and the pleasures and the impact of fundamental scientific discovery. I call this the pleasure of finding things out. DNA is the fundamental unit of life. Since its discovery and understanding of its structure, humans have found ways to manipulate it, to understand the ways in which it is inherited, and to use it for our own advantage. I mean, for example, the biotech industry is in, estimated to hit beyond $700 billion by 2025. All of this stemming from very basic research into understanding the structure of DNA, cloning, and recombinant DNA technology. So how exactly does DNA look inside us? DNA is a big molecule, yeah? So if you take all the DNA from a single cell in your body and stretch it end to end, it's going to be about six feet long. That's a footprint of an entire elephant. And if you take all the DNA from all your cells in one person and stretch it end to end, you can go to the moon and come back 6,000 times. Yeah, so it's really, really big. This also is DNA here. What you're seeing in black is a bacterial cell, and all of its DNA is out here in gray. Now, this DNA is compacted nearly a thousandfold to fit inside this tiny cell, and in this confined volume, it gives the cell life. Now, I am fascinated by the ability of life to be encoded in a structure like this. For the past few years, as a, as a scientist, I've been obsessed by trying to understand how DNA functions. How does DNA encode life in it and genetically propagate it through generations and lifetimes in such a confined volume? Now, when I started my journey, I was awestruck by the fact that this very important molecule is actually highly unstable. DNA is under the constant threat of damage from within the cell, but also from the environment it is in. Estimates suggest that a single cell in a single human body can undergo between 10,000 to 70,000 lesions per day. In fact, your DNA must be getting damaged at this very moment, and we have no idea that our cells are undergoing this onslaught and dealing, it, dealing with it with precision and fidelity. My lab tries to understand this process. We are motivated to understand how cells fix damage. Who are the mechanics of DNA damage repair? How do they sense and find damage? And how do they fix them accurately? And remember, there's nobody telling these mechanics how and where to go. This is a purely physical and chemical process. So how do we do it? We do it by peering live into cells and looking at single molecules of enzymes working on DNA and fixing the damage inside cells. Now, since the first time Leeuwenhoek made this magnifying scope to look at life, we've come a long way into observing life around us. We can look at population behaviors, we can look at behaviors of single organisms, we can look at behaviors of single cells in a single organism, and now we can look at behaviors of single molecules inside a single cell, and we can look at how it transacts on DNA and does events such as DNA repair. And using technologies like this, my lab tries to understand the mechanism by which damaged DNA gets fixed accurately. Now, let me give you a, a brief example of one such problem we have tackled. Let's imagine that this circle here is a molecule of DNA, and there's another copy of it sitting here. Now, one of these gets damaged. I've shown that there as a red star, and the only way to fix that red star damage is to copy up the damaged region from this green part here, right? And for this to occur, the red and the green portions have to perfectly align over each other so that the damaged bit can be copied over from the undamaged bit. Pretty straightforward, right? Well, not exactly. For a cell, that's like trying to find your partner in a crowded you know, music festival or a big conference like this. And we know very little about this process. This red star has to go find its partner all the way there, repair, and then come back again. We know this occurs in the cell, we know it occurs constantly, and only when it goes wrong do we realize we had a problem, because when this type of damage is not fixed, you get cancer. So for the first time, using microscopy, we were able to see how this process occurs in a living cell. So I'm going to give you an example here. You're seeing this black cell here. 
Um, the red dot shows you where the damage is, and the green dot shows you where the repair is going to occur. And using powerful microscopy, we were able to see this red dot move inside the cell, go find its partner, and they go all the way back again. What is the scale of this process? It's one micrometer. You're seeing something occur within one micrometer and within tens of seconds. This is a very fast and very dynamic process. And only using powerful tools like microscopy were we able to first see the process and then understand the mechanism by which such a process can occur in the cell. And using technologies like this now, my lab is asking three very important and exciting questions in the field of DNA repair. How do cells know there is damage? How do they send the right mechanic to fix the damage? And how do they do quality control? How do they ensure that they did the repair accurately? In general, basic science like this provides us a handle into understanding the world around us and within us. It gives us a foundation to answer three very important questions. What is the phenomenon? How does it occur? And why it may have come to be? Using information like this, we get a foundation for all application, providing cures, solutions, and products. Examples include insulin, um, cisplatin for cancer cure, and even antibiotics for infections. More generally, what defines the uniqueness of a scientist is the question that they've set out to address, a unique frontier question that very few people around are asking, a question that can remain a pursuit for a lifetime. For me, the pleasure of finding things out, of discovery, and of training other individuals to have scientific thought and ethic is priceless. Science, like art, provides a handle for us to capture, understand, highlight the world around us and within us. It gives us a sense of wonder and awe. It pushes the limits of our imagination and perception. Scientific thought travels through history and shapes our futures. And for me, it is a way of life. Thank you.